Reebok community, we are back for episode 2 of Reebok Reviews. My name is Kellen Pierce, I'm the technical rep for Reebok in Cape Town. And today we have a special guest with us who goes by the name of Dr. Nishal Prince. Thank you for joining us. Hey Carl, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here and chat all things running today. Yes. Awesome, great to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I studied at the University of Johannesburg and I finished my master's degree there uh, in 2016 where after I practiced a little bit in Potchestrom and I moved on to working on the Queen Mary 2 Ocean Liner. It was a fantastic experience yep. and then afterwards I decided to um, come set up my practice in Cape Town. Um, so I've been in Cape Town ever since 2018 um, and then just recently in December I moved into this lovely spot that I have here. Um, I'm practicing now right next to Monty Crew CrossFit and then inside I'm sharing with Rock and Coffee which is also a little bit of a passion of mine. So coffee and chiropractic I think has a nice ring to it. <laughs> yeah, for me I'm sure. So I noticed your name doesn't necessarily go by the normal Dr. Lachelle Prince you practice or whatever it may be. Um, so tell us a little bit about the name of your practice. Uh, okay, so my name is uh, Chiropractic Collective. I originally started off with the generic uh, Dr. Princeton Chiropractic and I just felt that it didn't really tell the story that I wanted to tell. So um, I moved on to Chiropractic Collective and that is what I'm known as now. And the reason for that is I wanted to create a bit more of an experience. I also like working with different practitioners. So I like to work with biokineticists and physiotherapists and I like to incorporate as many disciplines in there as possible. Um, and I also have noticed that people find it tedious to go to a doctor or to a chiropractor because they, they're a little bit stressed because of their injury and I want them to feel that it's inviting and that's also where the drop in coffee comes in and I would like them to just like have a coffee, come for their session and understand that we are here to help them and they shouldn't be stressed about what's about it. So today we're going to chat a little bit about run gates, that being neutral running, pronation, supination, and Dr. Lachelle is actually going to chat about what that entails. Okay, so I'm sure every runner has heard that they either pronate or supinate or overpronate. Um, well, today I've got news for you. So the good news is that every person should pronate, every person should supinate. Your foot is meant to go through those motions when you're running anyway. So when you're running, your foot hits the floor and then your foot tends to go into a little bit of pronation. Once it completed that full pronation phase, it goes into supination. And then that's the way your body absorbs shock. So uh, I think the problem comes in that the word pronation gets a little bit overused. Um, we need to maybe start to feel a little bit concerned when we look at over pronation or excessive pronation. So what that means is that your foot either spends too much time in the pronation phase or that it goes through that motion So now that we've chatted a little bit about the running gates and what that's all about, what would be the various different causes of each? Okay, so um, when we look at our lower limb, um, every single joint we have there, that includes the arch of the foot, the ankle, the knee and the hip, they all need to kind of work together to create a good uh, shock absorber for the body. So when you're running, you put quite a bit of pressure on those joints and it's important that the shock absorption is correct. So, when we're looking at pronation as well as supination, they work very similarly, they just go in different directions. Um, when your foot spends too much time in one of those positions or then um, goes too quickly through one of those phases, um, that leads to the over pronation or excessive pronation supination that we talked about. Uh, additionally, if you don't have a stable arch, that also could lead to um, over pronation or supination. So the other thing that we need to look at is the hip um, and the glute muscles associated with it. So two of the glute muscles, our glute knee and glute min, activate um, external rotation of the hip joint, which then creates stability down the chain. So if the glutes are activated, it allows for good shock, shock absorption at the knee, and then it creates a stable arch, which is ideal for neutral running and then allowing your foot to move through its normal range of motion. The uh, last thing that we can look at is the fact that our feet are supposed to be quite mobile. So the front of the foot, forefoot and the back of the foot are supposed to be able to move independently of each other. Um, as soon as that doesn't happen, uh, you can get stuck in the rotation or supination position, um, which then could create So having chatted about the technical aspects of the shoe in episode 1 and touched on the different types of run gates and what the 
Force is what those are. With the Freeway Flavor I didn't get two point five meters for the run. Okay, so Carl, I've run these once and I can tell you that the first part was absolutely accurate. They make you feel like you're floating and it's a very, very comfortable shoe. So I was um, impressed with uh, my first run. Um, so when we're looking at this shoe, uh, two things that are important for, for normal foot functioning is the fact that it's firstly a neutral shoe and then that it has a wide toe box. So that being said, neutral shoe means that it has no support for pronation or supination. So it allows your foot to go through normal range of motion. It goes through normal pronation, normal supination, and that's good for trunk absorption. Um, secondly, with the wide toe box, it allows your toes to move freely in that area, which then allows you to go over that big toe, which creates a great base of support. Um, that would then prevent the knee from dropping in and the rotation of the hip to happen, uh, which would then also create just normal function of the foot within that shoe. So I think this is a lovely shoe for your everyday runner and it creates a great space for you to function optimally. Dr. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks Carl, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to try out these beautiful shoes and to just see how such a lightweight shoe can offer all of the support that I need during my runs um, in the weeks to come. Amazing. Stay tuned, Reebok community, for more running and the Reebok Freeway Flow Guide in G2.0.